ask me Paul, can you show us how to sharpen a serrated knife? So, here is a uh, nice serrated knife that came in. I'll show you right now. It is not cutting well at all. It's got like no grab. Tiny little bit. But it feels, it feels very dull. Now sometimes, if you feel on the back side, you can even feel the uh, bar completely rolled over. Sometimes it's so severely rolled over, it'll literally grab your fingernail and you can't straighten it. I'm not feeling that on this one. It's just feeling basically dull to me. The bar could be, uh, could have rolled to the inside, which is a possibility. Yeah, and I think that's what happened here. I am feeling a little bit of grab on the inside of the scalp. So what's our goal here? Our goal here is to raise a burr within that scallop because that little scallop area is the main cutting area. We also want to restore some grabbiness to the teeth. So my favorite method for sharpening serrated knives is done on a 1x30. I'm going to show you guys how I do it. I'm going to show you how I used to do it because how I currently do it, you may not have the one thing that I have, but I'll show you that anyway in case you decide you want to pick something like that up. So we're going to come over here to the 1x30. Alright, so first I'm going to show you my original way of doing it. So here's a 1x30. You need to have edge trailing, so you want to be going away. You can't go edge leading. I always do serrated knives edge trailing. Now, one way to do it is you can take the serrated knife. Usually serrations are around a 30 degree angle. So you could kind of estimate that. And you can go right down this belt. Edge trailing and start trying to raise a bar. So before I had the item I'm going to show you in a second, this is what I used to do. I would go right down here trying to get in that scallop area and start raising a burr again. So first I want to kind of cut in the scallop a bit, but then I also like to come from the flat side as close to a zero angle as I can get to raise a burr on the inside. So I would come in and I would come up right up here real close and I'm literally going to Go right down the knife as close to flat as possible. And what I'm looking for there is just to start pulling the, the very teeth up. And I can already feel this is starting to get sharp. And you'll see where the belt has hit has been the very, very tip there, which is good. A lot of times if you're off, you'll see a big mark across there and it'll be real obvious. Uh, you know what that someone sharpened that flat side but we're interested in the teeth here now let me show you what I use are I use custom cut little trizac belts so I take a 600 grit usually older trizac belts that I've used for a while and I save them and I will cut them down to size with a belt splitter I'll put a link uh, in the video to the belt splitter that I use and where I got it. But basically, I just put one of these on my 1x30. And the nice thing about this is, this gives me just a little bit more control to get in there and I can work in that arch without hitting the entire belt. And I like to get in there and literally see that I'm grinding away material right in that little crease of our scallop there. I want to see that I'm removing the metal right in the base because that's the most important area for the cutting of a serrated knife. The grabbiness is more the teeth, and that's pretty easy to restore. But as we're trying to get in here and restore this serrated knife's cutting ability, this is the one way I like to do it. 
And having a little tiny belt like this is very useful for scallops. And you could even cut it even, you could even go in half of that. So what I did, and now you're going to see probably, and I can feel the burr. I raised a very significant burr on the back, on the back side now of this. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go again, flat side like I showed you on the full size belt, just down here, and my goal right now is the teeth portion. I'm just going to go right down there, and I can't, you can't even go right up against the, uh, the flatten if you need to. And you don't have to go as slow as I'm going, you can go pretty quick. Just like that. And you'll see the, uh, I'm just hitting the teeth area. Alright, so now that I've raised that burr inside there, now I have to knock it off. So now I gotta remove this burr. And this is very important part because this is really what makes this knife sharp. If you don't do a, a good job removing the burr, the serrated knife's not going to be sharp. So I like to go on my vise. I simply, the best thing I like to use for me is a Dremel tool with a little wire wheel on it to get all in that serration and knock that burr off. And let me see if I can show you this so you guys can see. You'll see the bar. I kind of zoom in here real quick. And you'll see that it's gone. You guys see that little shiny area at the base of the scallop there? It's right at the very edge. Okay? And that's what this wire wheel is going to take off. So let me back out. It doesn't take a whole lot. I'm sure we're focused. Okay, so I'm just going to start. And I'm going to go right down the inside of that scallop. And you'll see the burr coming off. Now, some people do this with a wire wheel on a grinder. And that's totally fine, too. I like to do it with... The Dremel tool. But let me just show you already. Come on camera, you can focus. So you guys see that little foiled edge, which was the burr we raised, is now gone. Okay, here's my test media. And I want to see this be nice and slicey. Yeah, and that's good. That's cutting real nice. Yeah, beautiful. And you can feel like it had no grab before. All that grab is returned and it feels really, really good. So this is done and ready to go back to their customer and they will be much happier with this serrated knife now when they get it back because it's now performing. And that's how to do a serrated knife on your own. So just in case you guys had any questions, the belts I'm using, when I do serrations, it's 800 Trizex and higher. So usually 800, 1200, and I've even used 2500 grit Trizex for serrations.